Hi, I'm Alex Juhas for FemTechNet in conversation with Elizabeth Lash. And the key word for our conversation is discipline. Discipline. <laughs> Fuck. Exactly. <laughs> in the Foucauldian sense. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Liz, you, cho you chose this. How yeah. come? Um, I, because I'm interested in the ways that um, a lot of the kind of core group of women uh, seem to have almost as problematic a relationship to discipline as I do. Um, because I think working in multiple disciplines helps me sort of think about particular kinds of research questions in ways I wouldn't be able to think otherwise. But it also makes it really hard um, when you have to do things like figure out how to work within departmental structures and that sort of thing. Um, so something that's kind of interesting about the first sort of group was to see how many people were either from science studies, which is um, kind of a, a, a group where people are, who are looking at the history of science, the philosophy of science, the rhetoric of science, or the sociology of science, um, are all kind of trying to work across those disciplinary boundaries to understand something that is in sort of yet another disciplinary realm, scientific inquiry. And then you have a lot of people in that group doing kind of media arts work. And that also has a kind of complicated relationship with discipline because um, getting your work to count in the academy is really hard because the academy is set up to value um, peer reviewed publications. And if you're a performance artist, um, you're not necessarily creating peer reviewed publications. The important things might really be the performances and that engagement with the public, um, and, or your work that you're doing with your students, or this kind of collaborative work that you're doing sometimes with people who aren't artists. Um, so I think about somebody like my uh, you know, colleague at UC Irvine, Antoinette Lafarge, who does all of this really cool feminist work that doesn't sort of fit that kind of disciplinary model of the sort of German university, um, and kind of figuring out what kinds of ways of thinking we can have um, that are in, more interdisciplinary and yet also sustainable. Right, and I guess for me, the if I was going to try very quickly to say, well, why is interdisciplinary T feminist? Why are feminists so often interdisciplinary? For me, the political stake of our work, that our work as it must be, is, is intellectual, is uh, artistic, but also has some sort of end goal in the world. Once, you're, once you have that end goal in front of you, you will use the v variety of means that are available to you because the goal is more important than the boxes. And so I feel like many of us end up having to move across silos, across disciplines, in in the name of whatever our feminist goal may be at that time. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, well, I think when you're really actually trying to, uh, you know, avert certain kinds of, it sounds dramatic to say avert disasters, but in some ways, there are disasters that are happening all of the time. Um, and they can be very personal disasters. They can involve a disaster for one student who is coming from, you know, a household where nobody understands what it means to go to college and you know the student that that one student can't make um, these outrageous student loan payments mm -hmm. that's a kind of disaster too and that involves um, sometimes creative interdisciplinary thinking to think about how we could imagine a different kind of university or a different kind of knowledge structure right so I think that we're going to end this conversation there and part of what we do is in this different kind of knowledge structure, imagine a conversation and a linking using technology to allow us to learn from each other. And so we invite you to join the conversation by making a video or watching a video about another keyword, which might be disaster <laughs> or failure. Thank you.